Have you ever wondered if our ordinary Sims world might be a playground for extraordinary interstellar lives? Welcome to the untold story of pollination technician Nine Smith, Sims's extraterrestrial mystery unveiled. Hello everyone and welcome to The Sims Lore. Today we're delving into the life of pollination technician Nine Smith, a retired alien technician turned family man. From fathering children through alien abductions to his peaceful suburban life, his story challenges our understanding of extraterrestrial involvement in The Sims world. So go grab your snacks, let me know what you're having in that snack report, and don't forget to subscribe and like this if you enjoyed it. Alright, let's get straight into the video. Welcome to Strangetown, a parched oasis in the heart of a digital desert of The Sims 2, where secrets swirl in the hot winds and mysteries bloom amidst the arid landscape. This small, sun-baked town nestled in the arid hills of the desert is home to the most peculiar stories and mysteries in The Simsverse. From abandoned warehouses to the iconic crash site, every corner of this town whispers tales of the strange and extraordinary. There are 16 housed residents, 31 townies, and an array of buildings that tell tales of a past both rich and bizarre, which at first glance, the town's barren landscape, dotted only by the resilient cacti, paints a picture of desolation. But delve deeper and you'll find that Strangetown's true essence lies in its eerie silences. The two main streets, ominously known as the Road to Nowhere, are lined with homes that harbor secrets too strange to speak of. Strangetown's community heartbeat pulses weakly through its two lonely community lots. A large swimming pool that echoes with the laughter of ghosts rather than children, and a cluster of decommissioned military buildings, now serving as the town's only clothing, grocery, and game stores. It's as if the town itself is stuck in a limbo, clinging to the remnants of life through these repurposed structures. On the outskirts, a large crater cradles the broken remains of a UFO, a silent testament to the town's intimate dance with the extraterrestrial. Was it pollination technician Nine Smith's vessel, or the unfortunate end of a journey meant to return Bella Goth to Pleasant View? The truth remains buried under the sands of time, much like the secrets of Strange Town's residents. Perhaps it's the town's connection to the eerie disappearance of Bella Goth or the silent screams that seem to emanate from the crash site. But Strangetown holds a mirror to the uncanny. It invites the curious and the brave to explore its mysteries, to uncover the stories hidden in its shadows. But be warned, for in Strangetown, not everything is as it seems. <laughs> and some doors, once opened, can never be closed again. Meet pollination technician Nine Smith, a retired pollination technician with a cosmic legacy. Once a key player in interstellar interactions, pollination technician Nine now resides in Strangetown with his wife Jenny and their children Johnny and Jill. But he wasn't always the suburban dad you're about to meet. Originating from a distant planet, his early life was spent mastering the art of pollination, a critical process for sustaining life across galaxies. His unique journey to the Sims world began with a mission, a mission that involves abductions and the mysterious propagation of alien DNA. His bio reads, the only thing that PT9 loves more than his lawn is his family. When he is not spending time with his children, he enjoys clipping coupons and staring up at the sky. But before we move further into pollination technicians whereabouts and escapades, at the heart of this mystery is the curious family. The story begins with married couple Glarn and Glabe Curious. Little is known of Glarn and Glabe's life together. They were just another married couple, navigating the ebbs and flows of union and mundanity. However, the tranquility of their life was shattered when Glarn found himself the target of an extraordinary encounter, an abduction by pollination technician Nine. This encounter left Glarn with a burden no human before him had carried the impregnation with twin alien hybrids, Chloe and Lola. We know from memories and from the family photo album that the couple were unhappy after Glarn was impregnated by the alien. Glabe is pictured crying, Glarn looks very upset as he is holding one of his daughters and the other alien twin is on the floor. 
Now, here many speculate that Glarn was actually pregnant for a second time in this picture. I can see the maternity clothes and the bump, however, there's no mention of or existence of another curious family member, alien hybrid or not. The theory here is that perhaps they were removed from the game for some reason or other. Many also speculate that this picture was taken as Glarn made the decision to abandon his girls in the care of his wife Glaive. Later, we find that he went on to marry Kitty Hogleg and father four more children, this time all human. He had a daughter Jenny and sons Pascal, Vidkund and Laszlo. Now, this is where things get… even weirder. Long after impregnating Glarn, pollination technician Nine Smith's story takes an unexpected turn when he decides to retire in his favourite place, Strange Town. And not only does he retire here of all places, he marries Glarn's human daughter, Jenny. So, based on the story we've been all told these years, through bios, memories, family albums, and the main storytelling Welcome to Strange Town screen, it looks like Pollination Technician first met Jenny at a pool party when they were both adults. I'm just editing this guys and I wanted to jump in and say that Jenny actually met Pollination Technician 9 when she was a child. Then, later on when they were both adults, she befriended him. Just for clarification. It's worth mentioning from her bio that she likes green. Considering she's wearing a green swimsuit and she seems to be staring at a very green Pollination Technician 9, it's safe to assume she was smitten. It appears that his earliest memory is of meeting her, with no recollections preceding this event. This suggests that his choice to settle in Strangetown might have come at the price of memory loss, maybe even imposed by his superiors. Consequently, he has no memories of his life before starting a family with Jenny. Interestingly, while all of Jenny's siblings recall her engagement and marriage, an element seemingly programmed into the game, they have yet to meet their niece or nephew. This leaves room for player interpretation, which is strange because the game provides no clear insight into her family's reaction to her marrying the alien, who also happens to have impregnated her father. It raises questions. Was Jenny unaware of Glarn's history with Pollination Technician 9 before their relationship? If Jenny was in the dark about the entire affair, then following Glarn's death, Chloe and Lola would also be unaware of their father's identity, leaving Pollination Technician 9 as the sole keeper of this secret. However, even his memories are gone regarding his pollination work in the past. Yet, it's fascinating how he was drawn to Jenny once again bringing him into the orbit of the Curious family. This could suggest a heightened sensitivity of the Curious family to the alien species. Or it might hint at a more sinister nature in Pollination Technician 9's actions. Either way, the details remain a mystery and we can only speculate. I just can't stop thinking about how Jenny is a stepmother to her half-sisters Lola and Chloe. Okay, so the timeline of events can be categorized in the following order. Glarn and Glaive are somewhat happily married until Glarn gets abducted by aliens and has his daughters. He then decides to abandon them, leaving the girls under Glaive's care. He then goes on to marry Kitty and they have four kids together. The kids seem to be growing up happy and learn a lot from their very knowledgeable dad. After becoming an adult, Jenny sees Pollination Technician 9 at a pool party. Kitty unfortunately dies right before Jenny and Pollination Technician 9's wedding. All of Jenny's brothers remember her getting engaged and married, but not the birth of their nephew and niece. Glarn then dies right before Pascal gets abducted by aliens and after Jenny conceives her first child, Johnny. So it's a bit unclear whether she was not in contact with her parents or whether she didn't let them know she was getting married. Let's take a closer look at this so-called picture-perfect family. The Smith family resides at 101 Road to Nowhere and their bio reads, After a fruitful career, Pollination Technician 9 has retired to his favourite planet. But can his son Johnny make friends and fit in? Or is this family just too strange for Strangetown? Their house is a charming two-storey residence with a traditional American architectural style. It features a prominent gable roof with a dark roofing material that contrasts with the mustard yellow siding of the walls. 
The roof is adorned with three symmetrically placed dormer windows, each with a gable roof of its own. The house sits on a well-manicured lawn, enclosed by a white picket fence that adds to its suburban appeal. The lots surrounding are completely arid, scorching sand contributing to the sense of a desert-like environment, underscored by a lone cactus indicating a dry desert climate, which, good to note here, would make having a bright green grass lawn incredibly strange to have in the desert. The upkeep of that bright green healthy lawn alone would probably bring them to bankruptcy, unless it's fake grass just like pollination technicians love for human sims. There are a few well-spaced trees and shrubs around the property, including what appears to be a pine tree and a young tree with a thinner trunk on the front lawn, providing a touch of greenery against the sand-colored backdrop. Again, super weird. A wooden front porch welcomes visitors, complete with a railing and accessible via a short staircase that aligns with a concrete walkway leading to the sidewalk. The house's main entrance has an ornate glass door, and there are two windows visible on the first floor, which have shutters. Inside, the first thing we see is a combination of a living room and dining area. The room has a neutral color scheme with pale gray or light beige walls that give it a clean and open feel. The floor is carpeted in a deep tan color. The living area features a plaid sofa with a pattern that includes shades of red and tan, accompanied by a small wooden side table and a red armchair. Opposite the sofa, there's a modest-sized television set on a simple stand, suggesting a comfortable area for some entertainment. The dining area includes a wooden dining table with a natural finish, surrounded by four matching chairs with green accents. To the far right, there is a set of tall white frame French windows that allow ample natural light into the room, and a sliding door that provides access to an outside deck. A small wooden chair sits near the window, offering pretty much nothing to the room other than maybe a spot for a quiet contemplation for a certain alien who must think about all the weird crimes he's committed. All the other rooms are standard and what you would expect from this family. It is very reminiscent of Jenny's family home where she grew up, so I think we know who the interior decorator is. There is a notable room, however, one that is completely empty, which could be another baby's room. Although you'd have to be very quick about it since Jenny only has five days until she becomes an elder. Considering the fact that he is also very close to the end of his life, as he is already an elder, Without the intervention of cheats, he is set to pass away shortly, leaving his soon-to-be elderly wife to face the future alone. When the family is first played, it's the eldest son's birthday. You find a birthday cake on an end table and a buffet table set up at the rear deck, ready for celebration. Jenny has taken a paid vacation day from her job, where she works as a nurse, in order to attend her son's birthday party. As for pollination technician, it is said that he is retired, However, he is not drawing any pension, making Jenny the sole income earner of the family. There is a high-end stereo on the deck and a fancy bar in the kitchen. These items seem out of place compared to the rest of the house more modest furnishings and electronics, and taking into consideration their working situation as well. The house is valued at around 30,000 simoleons, but the stereo, bar and buffet table alone account for 3,850 simoleons of that total. Players should be aware that the pool ladder is positioned over a sloping area, preventing sims from using it unless it's relocated. Additionally, many bushes around the house are out of reach for trimming, and sims might find it difficult to care for their flowers by the front gate, unless the nearby fence is adjusted to run parallel to the sidewalk. The Smith family structure includes half-siblings with different levels of alien DNA, raising questions about identity and acceptance within the family and the broader community. This issue is also brought up in the family bio, asking the player if Johnny Smith, the eldest, who has more of the alien gene, will fit in, or is the family too strange, even for Strangetown? The enigma of how Pollination Technician 9 managed to integrate into the societal fabric of Strangetown remains unresolved. Notably, the Grunt family harbors a clear animosity towards him and his son Johnny due to their alien nature. Interestingly, the Grunts do not seem to share the same hatred for Jill, the other Smith offspring. Although she possesses alien DNA, her appearance is that of a regular human sim, which may have shielded her from prejudice. 
Some might argue that Pollination Technician 9's attempt at integration into Sim society was unsuccessful, given that he is not wholly embraced by the residents of Strangetown, a place he might have expected to be a sanctuary of sorts. Others might contend that he has indeed found success, having secured a loving wife and starting a family. Yet, there lingers a question of authenticity in the relationship between Jenny and Pollination Technician 9, particularly given that Jenny is the daughter of one of his abductees. This raises a deeper question. Is their connection genuine, or could it be influenced by alien influence or manipulation? The possibility that Jenny's feelings might be the result of extraterrestrial enchantments or even complete brainwashing adds another layer of complexity to the narrative of their marriage. So as we've seen, Pollination Technician 9 Smith's life on Earth is filled with familial warmth and suburban simplicity to the naked eye. However, to truly understand him, we must venture into the enigmatic world he left behind. A society mirroring the structured life of bees or ants. The Pollination Technicians. In this hive-like civilization, each alien plays a crucial role. At its core are the birth queens, pivotal figures in this intricate social structure, and they exist solely for reproduction, devoid of marital bonds. Next, we have the colony drones, the tireless workers of the Sims alien realm. Their tasks, though unclear, are similar to the laboring class of Sim humans, ensuring the smooth operation of their societal machinery. Then there are the pollination technicians, like our protagonist, Mr. Smith. Their role is fascinating, yet controversial. Abducting and impregnating male Sims. This practice seems to be a relatively new development in their culture, indicating a society in flux. In this society, personal expression, like growing hair, is seen as a societal faux pas, reserved only for those who retire or leave the planet. This gives us insight into Smith's full head of hair, a symbol of his break from traditional norms. Their attire too speaks volumes. Birth queens don suggestive clothing, while male aliens adhere to a uniform code. This distinction highlights the rigid roles within their culture. A startling aspect of this alien world is the detachment of parent-child relationships. Children, it seems, are separated from their parents at birth. Smith's lack of memories of his own parents or ancestors underscores this stark reality. Of course, this could be because his memories were affected once he decided to retire to Strangetown. Pollination Technician 9 Smith's departure from his rigid society to Sim Earth signifies more than just a change of scenery. It represents a radical shift in his identity, from a predetermined role in a hive mind community to a self-determined life filled with love, learning, and the complexities of human relationships. Of course, we can't move on deeper into Pollination Technician 9's history if we don't have a look at all the information from The Sims 2 for PSP. Pollination Technician 9 and his family have settled in the military-style housing of Division 47, a move orchestrated by General Buzz Grunt. His slow speech suggests that he is in the process of learning Simlish, highlighting his ongoing adaptation to life on Earth. Notably different is also his appearance from his initial portrayal in the PC version. His naivety is also evident as he seems unaware of General Grunt's underlying malevolence or the ineffectiveness of his attempt at a human disguise. Jenny's concern for Pollination Technician 9 is rooted in his nocturnal visits to a crashed UFO at the crash site. Here, players uncover the heart-wrenching backstory of him having had a family on his home planet. A friend of his had attempted to bring him a photo album from his alien family, but it was seized by humans, leaving him searching for this precious memento. Upon recovering the photo album, General Grunt withholds it, and once it's finally returned to Pollination Technician 9, he is overwhelmed by the revelation within, sparking a significant emotional reaction. The curiosity about Jill's appearance, given her alien heritage, is addressed in the PSP version of The Sims, where it's revealed that she possesses unique genetics from her father. This includes having eyes on the back of her head and a clandestine ability to set people on fire. So this brings me to all the theories that I have come up with during my extensive research into Pollination Technician's life before and after retiring to Strangetown.
pollination technician was forced into helping abduct and impregnate Sims until he finally decided to leave his home planet to retire in Strangetown. However, his UFO crashed on his way there and he ended up hitting his head and losing all of his memories. This theory makes a lot of sense since we know he has no memories of his life before coming to Strangetown. It's unclear though if he was forced to work as a pollination technician or if he just decided he was too old and wanted to retire to Strangetown. As an alien in the Sims universe, I believe they either get the option to retire to their favorite town or they're sneakily doing so. Either way, to me this seems like the most plausible theory. However, it wouldn't be a Sims lore video without a creepier look at things. Pollination Technician is in fact an alien spy that was sent to pollinate in the human way and infiltrate the society that aliens are so desperate to take over. He chose the Curious family and brainwashed all of them into thinking that him marrying Jenny and having kids with her was a good idea. The only one able to see how things truly are is General Buzz Grunt. I mean, think about it. A pollination technician impregnates an unsuspecting man and then, years later, marries this man's daughter, who was conceived in a separate union, simply because the man cannot confront his responsibilities as the father of alien twins. That is just… sick. And yet, Jenny and the entire Curious family seem completely unbothered. In my opinion, their state of acceptance suggests that they've been brainwashed. Remember my last video from a couple of weeks ago where we had a look at 88 Road to Nowhere? Well, I thought it would be ironic to bring him shopping there. I mean, there's something hilarious about bringing an alien to a government science facility turned shopping center. Also, yeah, he's such a family man that he goes grocery shopping but wants to autonomously flirt and tickle towny Crystal Wu. I'm really not convinced by this guy. Even in the early promotional materials for Strangetown, Pollination Technician 9 is presented as odd and unsettling. <laughs> His alien nature certainly contributes to this impression, but if he truly were a well-assimilated, trusted member of society, why is he creepily laughing and being super weird? The whole story is created as a subtle but not so subtle social commentary. Think along the lines of a social commentary on xenophobia and or racism. The developers created this story as a social commentary about Pollination Technician 9, who represents the quintessential other, an alien being in a human-dominated society. The friction between him and the native Sim, General Buzz Grunt, can be seen as an allegory for the all-too-common fear and distrust of those who are different. General Grunt's house, numbered 51, alludes to the secretive military base Area 51, notorious for its association with alien conspiracy theories. This reference further underscores the tension between the native and the foreign, the known and the unknown. The struggles of Pollination Technician 9 to integrate and be accepted in Strangetown parallel the experiences of immigrants who try to adapt to a new country. His attempts at learning Simlish and integrating into the social fabric through marriage and family are indicative of the assimilation process. Despite these efforts, he remains a target of suspicion and hostility, highlighting the difficulties non-natives often face in gaining acceptance no matter how hard they try to fit in. So this theory means the story of Pollination Technician 9 and his interactions with General Buzz Grunt and the wider Strangetown community serves as a powerful commentary on the societal challenges of xenophobia, integration, and the multifaceted nature of interpersonal relationships. The game becomes a microcosm for examining the fear of the unfamiliar and the struggles that non-natives face as they seek to find their place within new societies. Which theory sounds like the most plausible to you? Which theory do you implement in your gameplay? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Alright guys, there you have it. All about Pollination Technician 9 and his extraterrestrial integration into Strangetown. I would like to thank my Susul channel members Jiggly, Chrissy Pine and Bells. Thank you so much for your support. I would also like to thank my patrons Negative Dana, Artsy Flashback, ML, Adele Isted, Jolina and Treats for Chewy. Thank you all so much for supporting my channel. That's it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like the video if you enjoyed it and let me know your theories in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram for more lore and updates. 
I'll see you in my next video. Bye.